It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with The Mixed Martial Arts Hour back in your life on this Monday, September 24th. 2012. It is so great to be back in our studio after a one-week hiatus, and uh, you may have heard my in-studio guest there. I think uh, he may have had some uh, some memories. It, may, it might have ring a bell that that uh, that Lenny Hart sound at the the top of the show. We will get to him in a second. There's so much to get to in this show, and we are so excited to be here for two plus hours with you. Of course, joined in the back as always by Brendan, Isaac, New York Rick. We will get to New York Rick and the. Rick's picks in the third hour. We'll see how he did at UFC 152, and uh, we'll look ahead to UFC on Fuel TV number five. Of course, no Strike Force this weekend. If you missed the news, Strike Force has been canceled due to Gilbert Melendez's injury. We tried to get Steven Espinoza, the head of Showtime Sports, on the horn. He declined due to a busy schedule. But joining us today, uh, in addition to our in studio guests, we will be talking to in the second hour Bjorn Rebney. The Bellator CEO himself, a lot to talk about when it comes to Bellator and their upcoming season, of course, which kicks off this Friday. And John Volante, who was supposed to fight on Saturday night in Sacramento against uh, Guto Innocente. That fight, of course, canceled. We'll find out what's next for John Volante. Hit us up on Twitter, twitter.com slash Ariel Hawani or twitter.com slash New York Rick. Just use the hashtag, the MMA Hour. We'll be taking your questions, comments, concerns in the second and third hours. But first, so honored, so honored. I can't even say how honored I am to come back one week hiatus before the holiest day of the year for my people to be joined in studio by our good friend Quentin Rampage Jackson. He is, in fact, here. Rampage. I'm here. What man. brings you to New York, my friend? Well, you know, saying that I like New York. You know, I come see my doctor. He, he's in you know Connecticut, close by, and come see you. you know? Wow, the last time I saw you and spoke to you was in February, Saitama Super Arena, of course. It's yeah. been what uh, eight or so months, a little less than eight months. Were you just missing me? Was that it? Like you, no, you, you I, felt I, like you needed some Hawani in your life? No, no, no? not at all. Because that's what I was told. I was totally... You was misinformed, man. You were you, sitting around on Saturday, and you're like, you know who I haven't seen in a while? The I beta have, male. I, I, have, I, have never said, no. I have never said those words. My lips has never said those <laughs> words before in my life. What, that's wishful thinking, though. Well, maybe. Maybe it is wishful yeah, thinking. Yeah. Uh, but it is good to have you here. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you so much for coming. It's a, it's a real pleasure. And we even brought out the, uh, the Rampage... Action figure. Man, what's up? What's up with this? Look, he's been you, through the. No, no, what you done done to him, man? You. He's been through the ringer. You, you, you put marks. Up. What, what, what? And then look at the hair, man. It's like, like, what, what, what's up with that? Like, it's supposed to be black. You can black. speak to New York Rick back there. Who, who, who? He's did in charge. It? Yeah, we'll like, deal with him later. Okay, man, but um, we have a lot to get to. Yeah, you look like y'all been messing with me. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know what happened to your chain, by the way. That's yeah. Uh, yeah see, that's that's what it is. You, and they put John Jones. I mean. A little yeah. respect. Look, look, John Jones don't got a mark on him. Well, what? in the backside there. Yeah. All right, so let's get right to it. Obviously, there's a lot to talk to you about. I want to work backwards here. I mean, in the last, like I said, seven and a half months, a lot has happened in the world of Rampage Jackson. There's a lot to get to. But I want to work from the most recent and then go backwards. Obviously, you're supposed to fight uh, Glover Teixeira, UFC 153. Yeah. And then we found out the unfortunate news that you injured your elbow. And dislocated my knee. And I mean, dislocated. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my ankle. And you're okay. But we, we didn't talk about that, though. Well, <laughs> we didn't. We, the elbow was most serious. What exactly happened, and most importantly, how are you feeling right now? Well, I'm good now. I went to see Dr. Colker in um, Connecticut, and um, it's just an old injury that I that I've had um, for years. I first injured it um, like a like a like a like what two weeks before I fought Forrest, and um, Dr. C came out and um, healed me up over the weekend. It took him just a weekend to heal me up. He just really knows what he's doing. Like it's like. When you hyper extend, I went. To, I slammed this one guy. He scissor kicked his legs and hyper extended my my arm years ago. Okay. And then like so, every now and then things I'm not gonna say how how it in, how it gets injured because you know we got some fighters here that don't to be watched. They don't have honor. But every now and then my my elbow will flare up again. Like you get inflamed and stuff like that. And it's never fought, bothered me in the fight, but it's bothered me in sparring and training where you gotta you know do it. Uh, every day and every now and then it, it'll hurt. Then I can you know, I can take like thirty seconds to go back, but sometimes it gets severe, severe where I can't even move. Your, you can't even move your arm. Really? Yeah. So um, which one is it? That it, one? Yeah. It was okay. it was this one. And um, so um, I did the day I was sparring. I kicked the guy in the hip and dislocated my my um, ankle, and I didn't want to stop because the sparring was really good. I was going going really good, and then like um, the next couple of rounds later, I, I um, hurt my my um, elbow. But 
if I hadn't been in Brazil training, uh, if my doctor could have came to me or something like that, I wouldn't have to pull out the fight. But since I had to leave Brazil, you know, and you know, like I'm a big guy, and you know, I, my my weight cut is on the schedule and stuff like that, you know. You getting phone calls in the military? Yeah, well, people, you know, I don't know. They don't know your life. The world is watching right now. And this guy, he's an MMA guy too. He, he wow. should he should know. Hater. Uh, well, yeah. it happens, <laughs> and uh, you know, and um, since I had to leave Brazil, that's why I had to fight because I would have been good. Like, I would have been good. In two days, three days, but since I had to leave, and it took him like three days. This one was it hurt worse than the last time. It took him like three days to fix me, and do my ankle. He fixed my ankle in like five seconds. He just pop, pop, pop it back in, and I, I could have like if I had a camp here in New York or something, right. I still could have fought. When did this happen? It happened like uh, it happened on a Monday. I'm bad with dates. It happened on a Monday. Okay. Whenever we talk, whenever whenever Dana whenever Dana texted about it, oh, uh, it, tweeted about that it. Day. So when you injured yourself that day in training, did you know right away that you were not going to be able to fight. I, I, me and my manager talked about it, and we, when we, um, actually we waited the next day because I thought that maybe it would go away, and um, we we waited and see if I could if I could uh, train and stuff like that, and I, and I was thinking well maybe I could keep running, but then like oh my ankle is messed up. I, had, I know I got to lose weight, and then uh, we thought about it. I said we made a plan like well I got to go to New York, and then we'll go come back. But you know you get, you're not eating really clean and stuff like right. that, getting weight and not training. Well, we was we was gonna miss a week out of camp, and I was like, you know, my last fight, you know, so I fought injured and and stuff like that, and and I had all those problems behind that. And I said, like, I'm not gonna risk that again. So I said, you know, I just pull, I just pull out this fight and come back strong. I want, I want my uh, my next fight. To, I want to be close to 100 percent as possible and, and show the world what I can do. You know. And we will get to what happened in the last fight in a second, but I, I'm wondering, um, why were you in Brazil? Because I haven't known t you to be the kind of guy who trained in Brazil. Was it just because this fight was taking place in Brazil and you wanted to stay close? Yeah, this fight was uh, taking place in Brazil, and you know I always wanted to go to Brazil. And and um, uh, uh, Mario Sucata, um, like the, our team's jiu-jitsu coach, before you know, saying he went back to Brazil and opened up his gym and stuff in Brazil, and and he's like, oh, come come train with me and, and my gym in Brazil and stuff like that. And, we went to uh, Hisifi, Brazil, and I just I just wanted to soak up the culture and train and you know get my jujitsu up real good because Glover got really good jujitsu and even though he was running his mouth like he gonna try to knock me out, I knew he was gonna try to take me down and, and hump my leg like everybody else do that swears you know saying by God that they're gonna try to knock me out. So I just wanted to go there and get some really good jujitsu training in and and um, it really worked on my ground skills and, and you know stuff like that. So I, it was a good place to train. Were you the one that called Dana to tell him that you were going to pull out of the fight? Uh, I told my manager to call and tell him, you know. I just told him, like, yeah, I got to pull out. I felt bad, but, you know what I'm saying, this is my first time ever pulling out of a fight for an injury. Uh, you know, I've been fighting injured. I have, I fought so many fights injured. Like, some I win, some I lose. Like, the knee I had surgery on, I, I fought Rashad on that injured knee. I injured a knee in the Rashad camp. And I injured the knee in college, actually. You know what I'm saying? I was surprised it lasted that long. Really? Yeah, I, I originally injured that knee in college wrestling, and um, I never had surgery on it and stuff like that. And I'm surprised it, it lasted that long. And and I fought with with the messed up knee for so many years. And and then John, you got John Jones kicking kicking your knees backwards and stuff now. So it's like, and you know the other knee was giving me problems and stuff like that. And, but you know I I dealt with it and rehabbed that one. I was doing it and fixing it and got got that one good and stuff like that. It's just like I'm, I was like, man, you know what? I want to fight close to 100. percent This knee has bothered me for years, and I'm getting older, and you know, what I'm saying, and I just wanted, I just want to like make sure I'm close to 100 percent so I can put on a good show for my fans. I think they deserve that. Right. What did you think of the um, the matchup against Teixeira? Because Shogun, you know, famously he didn't want to fight him. He didn't think he was a big enough name. And then when they announced that you were going to fight him. And everything that had gone on behind the scenes, this was reportedly the last fight on your contract. People thought that the UFC was sort of feeding you to Teixeira. Yeah. He beats you, and then you go bye bye. Yeah, is know, that the way you viewed it? No, see, you know, a lot of a lot of fans like what people what people got to understand. A lot of the fans in the UFC are are the new fans to MMA. You know, what I'm saying they got to take that in consideration. Just because Shogun didn't want to fight that guy, you know, who knows why Shogun fights? I fight to pay my bills, and you know, I got I got kids I got put through college, and I got some kids I got saved up for lawyer fees and bail money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like I, I got things I like to ha I like to have fast cars, and I like you know I like the the good life. I like the, you know go in the club, make it rain sometimes. So I got doesn't yeah. 
Yeah, who doesn't? You know, I got it. So I got to fight. So I don't fight to be famous. I don't. So I don't care if he's a big name or a little name. I, I just care. It's like, you know, I'm going to fight, put on an exciting fight and get my bills paid. That's what I care for. Who, who you know, Shogun, he may, he, he may, he may like the, 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 all the, then come with, oh, what name he's fighting. And stuff. Right. Rankings. So, ranking. Like that. I don't care about that stuff. Like, uh, I saw, I saw him. Uh, I saw they showed me. Who, I didn't know who he was. They showed me clips. You of never him. heard of him. Never heard of him. They, wow. And they showed me clips. I'm like, oh, he's he's a sighting fighter. He's tough. He bangs. They said, oh, he can, he knows jujitsu and stuff too. But I'm like, I don't care. This guy bangs. Like, yeah. But okay, I fight him. And you know, and I didn't think that. I thought I thought he was tailor made for me. I thought it'd be a great fight for the for the um, fans. I thought that my last fight was so boring. I wanted to redeem myself. You know, what I'm saying it takes two to make a sighting fight. You know, what I'm saying one guy wants to fight, another guy wants to. Or a run, or just lay lay on top of you and stuff like that. It's like it gets kind of boring for the fans. And if you guys go back and watch my fights in my career, my career, you can tell what I care about. I care about uh, exciting the fans. That's why I am the way I am. And and that was the whole reason around why I was upset as I was back in the past. You know, I lost a lot of love for for fighting and stuff. And I can honestly say, like Dana White and the UFC, like took a lot of love out of me for for MMA. But since all this stuff is something weird happens, I got injured and and I got and I got healed up. And Doctor C, you know, saying he healed up my elbow and he fixed some other stuff that was bothering me. Like this guy's a miracle worker, like the best doctor ever in the world. He's work work with Shaquille O'Neal and a lot of other, a lot of top athletes. He's the best doctor in the world. And he fixed some other stuff and showed me some stuff. I'm like, wow. And my body is, you know, reason why I start, started hating training because my body was hurting so much when I trained. Everything hurt. My shoulders, this elbow, all this stuff hurt. But now he fixed me up and I'm doing good. Now I'm back to training really hard and I'm loving it. And I, even though I don't got a fight now, I'm still training. Hmm. It's like I used to be. I, the old Rampage is back. I'm telling you. It's interesting that you mentioned that. You said a lot there. But I remember when we had our, our talk in, in uh, Tokyo. Um, when you walked in, we would play the video games and all that. A lot of people enjoyed that. And I got the sense from that interview that the love was starting to go away a little bit. Yeah. And now, obviously, very good to hear that you're you're getting it back. But why did it go away for a minute there? Well, you know, I, I really, um, you know, I don't want to uh, you know, like touch on it too much. But, you know, it's no secret that, you know, I was having problems with, um, with, with um, the UFC. I, I lost my love when I lost that Forrest fight because mm-hmm. I know that I won that fight. And honestly, I wanted I wanted to cry like racist stuff. I did want to do that. You know, black folks, we, we good at that. Mm. But, you know, like um, I just don't think it's fair for, for a man who to go out there and, you know, you know, I, I know I took the light, I took the fight softly. I took, I'm like, oh, Forrest. I, I didn't train my hardest, you know what I'm saying? I was coming off, I was coming off the, uh, the Dan uh, Henderson fight and I had like a little, just a little injury on my, on my, no, so I didn't, you know, I didn't keep up training and stuff like that. But I'm like, oh, Forrest, I just knocked this guy out and stuff like that. And, and I trained, but I didn't train my hardest and stuff like that. But I knew, you know, I knew I was like, I'm going to do enough to, just to win this fight. Uh, train that's hard to win this fight. And then he injured my, my knee. He kicked me in the knee. And I, and I felt like, oh, I'm the champion. I'm going to do just enough to win this fight. And I felt like I did. But my, but after the fight, you know what I'm saying, I, um, I, I didn't react the way. People thought I would. I was like, I accepted the defeat, and I, I, you know, I knew that I won that fight. But I said, oh, you know, he kicked my butt, stuff like that. I, I you know, I, I, you know, saying held my head up high, and I, and I walked out because I didn't want to act a fool, and 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 because I, I know how it is. Like people don't know, like uh, what when I went back home to Memphis and stuff like that. I'm from the South, you know. what I'm saying a lot of white people coming up to me and stuff, saying stuff, saying like um, derogatory stuff to me. You know, what I'm saying after that loss. Yeah, after that loss, a lot of white people saying stuff to me and stuff like that. I'm like. It was some racist shit they were saying to me and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, you know, like, it shows your true colors. Like, because anybody that watched that fight can clearly see that I, I won that fight. And if you're happy over somebody winning a fight like that, it shows you how much of a bigot you are. And so that 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 took a lot of love from me and a lot of love from 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 my fans and, and everything. And I started smoking cigarettes and stuff more and, mm. and doing all that stuff. And I just, I didn't, I didn't have a love for, uh, for fighting as much, but I I kept that to myself. I didn't want to be one of those guys like oh, you, you know I lost that fight because because you know because I was black and stuff like that. Because when I did the whole Ultimate Fighter with with uh, Forrest and they gave him special treatment stuff, I I did. I felt like it was racist. Like really? uh, yeah, I did. But then when I did the Ultimate Fighter with Rashad, I felt the same thing, and I was, uh, uh, and I was like oh it couldn't be that because right. Rashad blacker than me, <laughs> and, and then I felt like oh it was because they came from the Ultimate Fighter. And that what it was, you know what I'm saying? I don't think that they screwed me out of that fight with Forrest because 
I'm black is because he, he, he he's a, he's their baby. You know, he's the one who put you them on the You think so? You don't he, think it was just three judges looking at a fight? I'm no, I'm I well, you know, honestly, like the judges in the UFC haven't been doing a great job right. all the time. So and it I'm is just important saying, to note the UFC doesn't hire the judges. It's Nevada well, in what, your case. It, people can think whatever they want to think. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here to say that. I'm just saying that um, this is how I felt. I'm just right. saying this is how I felt at the time. I have my own mind to think stuff. I'm not a sheep. I, mean, I feel like a lot of people in this world is a sheep. I just feel like I'm not a sheep. And all I'm saying is like um, this is how I felt. At the time, that's why I lost the love for for sure. fighting and MMA and UFC and all that stuff. And um, I felt sorry for myself and everything. And uh, I felt like that fight hunts you. You know, I felt like I want I want to fight. And and I've asked them over and over, give me a rematch with with Forrest. I don't care. I just want to I just want to prove to myself and the world like I can beat him. Right. You know what I'm saying? I did beat him. You know, like I, I was real proud of myself that I didn't give up. Like people don't know how how bad that that, that kick hurt. He kicked me in my knee over. And I'd never been kicked like that before. You know what I'm saying? You know, so that's. But I want. I, I'm, I'm curious. That was 2008. Right. You've had great moments since then. Yeah. You, know, you right. beat. You beat Machida. Yeah. You know, you had. You had a tough fight against Jardine. Right. So, but in Japan, I got that sense. Right. How'd you get it back now? It's just. It's just one of those things, like where. Now that you're healthy, now, like what? What was the epiphany the, that made you feel like, all right, I'm back? Well, it's like some of the fans and stuff, like um, like some of the fans, like. And stuck, you know, stuck, you know, stood in there and gave me support. And um, now, like, uh, like uh, Lil Wayne made a song and and put my name in a song. And now, Two Chains made a song and really? put my name. On, yeah, and it's like I'm thinking, like, man, you know, the world, you know, what I'm saying, hasn't forgot about me. You know, what I'm saying I used to be one of the best fighters in the world, and you know, what I'm saying like uh, my people out there, they still like support me, even though I haven't been doing it. And it's like giving me back my love for 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 the fight. Like I want to go out there and make make the people who support me um, proud, and I want to uh, and I want to show. My my family. I want to show myself that I still could be one of the best in, in the world again, and I know it. I know it. I can. When's the last time you felt this way? The last time I, the last time I felt like this was was back when I was champion, and really, and when I was like, um, you know, what I'm saying uh, the 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 undisputed champion, and back when I was fighting in Pride, when I was smashing people that I wasn't even supposed to smash. Let me play devil's advocate. You know, in the fight game, we hear got you know in the fight game, people there's so much that happens, boxing, MMA. And often we hear people say before every fight, "Best shape of my life, yeah. best I'll ever will you're be." You're supposed to. You're supposed to, you're say, supposed that. to say that. That's what fans. I know you're supposed to say that. You don't want to talk about your injuries. Of course, of course. So but if someone's here. watching this right now and and you seem to be in good spirits and you you're saying that you're you feel you know, as good if not better than you did as champion, why should they believe you? They they probably shouldn't believe me. I don't. I, they should probably just wait and see my next fight. Hmm. Then they can believe me. They don't have to take my word for it. Because you know I wouldn't I wouldn't say it if I. Then I I say the same thing like ah, I'm ready to retire and blah blah. But I'm I'm not. I thought I go. I'm, I thought that I was going to want to retire at at 35. I said that you know I'm 34 and stuff now. I feel I feel good now. Like you know I got the best doctors around me. You know, uh, like I got the doctors back in California. You know, Dr. Kessler and Dr. Moore who did the surgery and stuff on me and 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 I got you know Dr. C out here. And like I got the best doctors around to work on me, and I'm taking uh, measures. I'm I'm you know I'm taking drastic measures and keeping my body. Good. I'm start ice bathing, and I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna give it. I know I'm older now. I'm just gonna give it a good run, and you know, what I'm saying I just want to show the world that I still can be the best, and and they don't have to believe me. What today? What to, whoever the UFC put me in 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 the cage with next? I don't care who they put me in there with. They can I show them. Scale of one to ten on the the health meter. How healthy are you right now? Your entire body, like considering all these things you you've you've talked about here. I can honestly say I'm eight and a half, nine. Really? Yeah. When's the last time you felt that good? Last time I felt that good was eight and a half nine. Probably, probably, um, probably back um, back in the pride days when I was coming up. So, so the the, the elbows okay. Yeah, that was good. The knee, the ankle. That the the knee, the knee's good. You know, I, you know, you had surgery on. You go through all those things. I rehabbed it good and stuff like that. The knee's good. It don't bother. It don't bother me uh, when I'm when I'm wrestling or anything like that. I'm I'm so happy about that. And the ankle. It's, it's good. Like, I'm running. I'm running, like, four miles good. Like, before, I was so lazy. You know what I'm saying? You barely get two and a half out of me. And like, I'm running four four miles. And I'm I'm asking, you know what I'm saying, my training partners, come on, let's do six tomorrow. And really? It, yeah, and it's not like me. I'm happy when I do one. Yeah. But that's just me. I'm sure. <laughs> and, and so then I'm wondering, you know, 153 is October 13th. In hindsight, do you regret pulling out? Or do you not think you would have been ready to fight him? I know I, I wouldn't have been ready. I wouldn't have been ready to wait 
wise. Okay. Because you got, you know, you got to make, I got to make weight. I'm a big guy. Right. How much I, you weigh right now, if you don't I'm, mind me asking? I'm, I'm, right now I'm probably like 232, 230, 235. What's your usual rock, walking around weight? <laughs> 240. Really? So you're actually coming down now? Yeah, I'm finna, I'm finna start um, trying to walk around by 220, 225. That's one of my, my goals to start walking around like that. Because, you know, you get older, you, you feel out more. How right. are you? I just turned 30, believe it or not. And you still a little pimp sweet. You know, I actually have been working out. Have you noticed? No. Doing a few, you know, and now I'm a father. You got to be, ha- you got to have some muscles to carry that kid. My son's in the 92nd percentile in terms of weight. His, 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 I'm pretty proud. His, his mother must have been a specimen. She must have been an athlete. I thought you were going to go in a different direction and then we would have had a problem. You don't want no problems. <laughs> you don't want no. You want to squash it right now? No, right? Well, you know, this we is get, all we, get, we can move this stuff. We can move it. We can move. We, can, we don't got much room to squash it. Up I now. know it is. You it want is, to squash it right now? It is a tough. Listen, I'm never going to say that word. I have, you know. By the way, I, since you're bringing it up, there are a lot of copycats in MMA. Let's just put it out there. I'm sure. And a lot of people, because you gave me those problems, which was almost two years ago now, mm. trying to do the same thing. And you know what? I don't know if I appreciate it. You were the first. We had it out. We squashed it. Now people are trying to do the same thing. And I don't know <laughs> if it's genuine. If you don't like me, you don't like me. Yeah. But if you're trying to copy you... you know. well, I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't like you. Yeah, that's true. Because I'm kind of like on the border. Like We got cool in Japan the last time, but... That was cool. And then you got then, mad at me. And then you said some shit. Well, not really. We'll get to that in a second. Is that, I'm just saying. Uh, you, but there are a got, lot of people who are copying you, just, just so you know. You know what? That's, that's been going on ever since I got to this sport. A lot of people even copy me and stuff like that, but they say that's the uh, best form of flattery. That's what they that say. That is true. Whoever they are. And you've always had this sort of love-hate relationship with the media. Honestly, like, people don't understand this about me. Like, uh, people on Twitter talk shit, and like, I don't fight to be famous. I've said it from day one. But you enjoy the perks of being famous, right? What there perks? Are, Tell uh, me the perks of being famous. You talked about the fast cars. You get money because you're famous. No, 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 get, no, no, no. Hold that, on, hold on. Those tell are me, perks. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me. All right. Fuck that. Like, rich people have that shit that ain't famous. True. Okay? I mean, you can get the same shit. But those know. are the perks of being famous as well. No, no. That's not the perk of being famous. Wh- With money and stuff like that? Yeah. Okay. It, that, ain't, that ain't the perk. Uh, uh, Gary Coleman was famous as hell. Where's yeah. his money at? Well, everyone's had, you know, there, uh, there, there are I'm stories of people who didn't deal with their money. But what I'm saying is... It's not the perk. I, it's not dis- bad I disagree. Be. I disagree with okay. you. Um, that's not a perk for being. So you'd famous. be happy if you were just Quentin Jackson, nine to five job, happy with your family, living the life. Honestly, money's not everything and stuff like that. But honestly, I can say like, uh, if I could turn back time and stuff like that, if I if I could live a normal life and with my family and stuff like that, and would have to, uh, if I can have all my privacy back and stuff like that, really? I would I would stay a construction and worker. not do any of this. No, I would. Really? Yeah, because. So much, so much good has happened to you. You've met so many people. You've traveled the world. That's good. You fought in front of, what, 50,000 people or whatever? Uh, um, 70,000. 70,000. Yeah, that's all good, but it all goes out the window when you're just trying to uh, eat dinner with your family yeah. or something, or you're on a date with a hot chick, and you're trying to be all cool and stuff, and you got some person walk up to you while you're eating, talking over your food, and you're a big germ free asking, can they take a picture with you, and when you say picture, spit come out your mouth, <laughs> right on your food while you're eating, and you're on, you know, or when you're in a club, you drink it, just trying to be a regular guy, and you dancing with this hot chick, and but the hot and, chicks like that, don't they? I no, don't know this. No, I'm just I'm, telling you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like you, okay. you, you dancing, and you got guys, you know, saying begging to buy you a drink while you dancing with this girl, and or on the picture while you dancing with this girl. I've, I've, you just don't understand. I don't want to go into. It. I'm just saying. Like I, 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 I would regular just. Be a regular guy, make pretty good money, put my, you know, have with my with my family, so I can just be a regular guy. Well, you aren't a regular guy. I see your your. I'm rampage. thankful. I'm thankful. Right. I'm, I'm thankful because honestly, like people don't know this. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I might write a book and stuff one day, but hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm supposed to die a couple times in my life. So I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people in my neighborhood and stuff like that didn't make it or in prison and stuff like that. You know, I could be in like one of the guys on the street corner begging for. So don't don't get me wrong. I'm grateful. I'm happy that you know what I'm saying. My heavenly Father. You know, gave me a job where I was good. I, was, I grew up a fighter. I used to fight bullies and stuff all the time for my friends. I had a bunch of little short friends, little skinny friends, look like you, because because <laughs> I hated bullies. You know, what I'm saying I'm thankful that you know, what I'm saying the skills that God gave me to be a fighter, I can make a living at it and stuff like that. But if people really sit down and remember, like when I started fighting, it wasn't popular. Right. You know, what I'm saying I used to fight in Japan. And I come home and then I was a regular guy. 
So it was just a little bit different. People people got to understand you got to walk a mile in other people's shoes. Like, I don't think, a lot of people want to be famous. A lot of people, oh, I wish I would be famous. I wish I would be famous. But you lose, your, you lose you lose all your privacy. Who, who, you know, I wouldn't wish, I, I wouldn't wish for fame. I wish, wish for health and wealth. You, you mentioned a couple of times you almost passed away. When was that? Well, when I was, when you when were I, younger. When I was growing up, you know, yeah. I got, I've been shot at. I had a guy put a gun to my head and pulled the trigger and the gun didn't work. It was Get jammed. Out. Yeah. And he, he killed, he killed somebody like a, a week later with the same gun. Cause it was like, oh, oh, he probably got old messed up gun, you know, and thank God it didn't. How old were you? I was in sixth grade. What? I grew up in the hood. Why is someone coming up to you he doing was in, that? Because we was fighting. He was jumping my cousins. I told you I used to beat up the bullies. Right. He was jumping my cousins. I got my people's back, and we was fighting. And um, he was he was a man. He lived in a project right down the street from my house, and he was a man at, at the age range. You know, he could fight. And I was a man. You know what I'm saying? And, he, and I, I, you know, we we scrapping, and he put the gun to my head. But he, nothing was there. And he, it didn't work. Wow. Yeah, I've been hit by cars like a couple times, like. Big time, supposed to have been dead. That's why I got this big dent in my head over here. What happened there? Uh, my cousin chased me with one of those, you know, those water guns where you pull the trigger and right. and, and the ink disappeared later. But I had a white shirt on. My mom was come pick me up. We were supposed to go somewhere. <laughs> I didn't want to get that. You, it yeah, don't yeah. disappear out of the way. And I just ran in the street. This car hit me and and I headbutt me and I jumped right in time so it wouldn't run me over. It you was jumped going, onto the car? Yeah, I was I was young. I was like in like third, fourth grade. I was a little, little bitty guy. The car was going like forty five. Back then, those cars were made out of metal. And you know what I'm saying? It messed me up a little bit, but you know, I'm still here. You mentioned, uh, and that is unbelievable, and I guess that gives you some perspective on life and it will make you thankful for I am everything. Thankful. I am yeah. thankful, but at the same time, it gets overwhelming. Sure. In the moment when people are coming up to you, I, you know, I, can, I can see how that could get. Um, so now with this newfound love, right? This newfound love for the sport, or maybe regaining your old regaining. love for the sport. So I guess a lot of people would like to know because it seemed like for a while there, you just wanted to have one fight in the UFC and go away. You well, wanted to go elsewhere. Does that mean you want to stick around, maybe? Well, the UFC is not MMA. Sure. I've not but found, they, but, I but let's be honest. They are, right now, the NFL of MMA, right? They are yeah. the top dog. Yeah, I agree. And they you know, they, they have the most viewers on pay-per-view. And well, I can, tell, I can tell you this, that um, since I've been um, vocal about my um, you know, plans to leave the sure. UFC, uh, my manager has been getting numerous emails and phone calls of people offering way more money than I'm making right now. Really? Right. And people, and like, if you think about what I've been saying is that I don't fight for fame, I fight for money. And so I don't care if, if the UFC is like, you know what I'm saying, like the, the um, NFL and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? They could be like the NFL, but but pay, pay you like a water boy because they are the NFL. And like, that's no, that's no bueno for me. So... These other shows, they might not be as as famous, but I, they probably think that I can bring that show up to, you know, Santa Fe, and they're willing to pay, and we can't negotiate with them or nothing right now. But uh, my manager left like, oh, we can't negotiate right now. But right, because you he, have still a fight left on your contract. Yeah, and I and from, from from what my manager said, like I don't I don't look at the contracts. From what he's saying, like we can't negotiate, but they've been throwing numbers at us, and my manager was like, my manager's like pretty pretty happy, like so he said, like when I finish my fight with the UFC, we we not wear it. Cause but I what about do... the UFC? Have they tried to maybe patch things up? And because you're still a draw for them, you're still one of the top light heavyweights. You know, have they tried in this sort of downtime, or are you not interested in that? Well, well, honestly, the UFC hasn't said anything to me. The UFC, they, 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 they they've been great. Like, like they um, taking care of my my injury. They've been paying the, the doctors. Like they pay for my surgery. You know, the UFC, the, you know, what I'm saying they they've been really great with the, all the injury stuff. They uh, reimbursed me for my airplane ticket and stuff like that. And I wish they reimbursed me for how much money I spent on camp. Because uh-huh. I spent a lot of money on my camps because I paid my, my sparring partner. I take care of them. Sure. I take care of the camp because, you know, that's, that's how I'm not cheap like some guys that used to be on my team. Oh. I, ain't, I ain't gonna say no names. Okay. But, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, <clears throat> what? But, you know, what was so, that? Uh, you know, it's like, you, you know. <laughs> Did he fight it, this weekend? <sighs> okay. You can continue. So, you know, I, 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 I do, I do, I take care of my people. You know what I'm saying? I do what I gotta do. Right. And, and, and the UFC has been, been really good and stuff about like that, but they haven't said anything to me. Like it's it's honestly I keep it real like the the I, I I haven't complained about a lot of stuff, you know that a lot of the reasons I had a problem with the UFC I haven't complained I'm not going to complain about them because, you know what I'm saying it's like it's it's me it's personal like when whenever the UFC want to talk to me I tell them face to face like things like what they should do and stuff like that but I got people offer me like way more money than what the UFC is is talking about and it's a different ball game now though right. 
back in the day, there was Pride, obviously. There was yeah. the UFC. Now there's, you know, there's Bellator coming up. There's yeah. some other organizations, but it's tough. It's tough out there. And even it's tough in the UFC. I mean, they've, they've canceled two events in the last, yeah. you know, month. I mean, it's, it's, I wouldn't want to be a free agent in this sport right now. I, I, well, you you wouldn't want to well, be, but, you know. <laughs> but me being a free agent yeah. is, is looks very promising to it me. It is. Right so now. do you want to get this fight over with? Do you want to fight maybe this year and then test yeah. the market 2013? Uh, whenever, whenever, I'm not, listen, when I'm not in a rush. Like, you know, I'm not saying the UFC paid me like a slouch. Like, they, they honestly, the UFC paid me pretty good. I, can, I, I have to admit. You're happy with it? Well, you know, I'm not a greedy person. I'm happy with it. But honestly, like I was saying, like, no, it's not worth it. What what stuff I got to go through with um with my privacy issues and and, and stuff like that. But it's honestly, but you're still gonna have that if you went elsewhere. I'm still gonna have it when I went elsewhere. But elsewhere is offering me more money. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, think about this. Like, uh, I think uh, no, I'm nowhere near famous as like like um like basketball like Kobe Bryant or like actors like um you know who's a big star like, Denzel Washington. Denzel, I'm not. I'm but I'm more. I'm just. I'm more accessible as those guys. Sure. And I don't have his. I don't know if those guys roll with bodyguards and stuff like that. But I go, we go, and people see me. And I'm still trying to be a regular guy and stuff like that. So people see me everywhere. And sometimes it, you get to a place, and you and say you 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 take one picture with one guy, and people recognize. Then you there for thirty minutes taking pictures. You know what I'm saying? Or, or you just got to sometimes just got to be rude. So it is. It, but it's, some might say that's the beauty of our sport, right? That you guys are so accessible. On the flip side, you know what I mean. On the flip side, it's the beauty for the fans, right? But what if I'm, what if I'm on my way? I'm, I'm, I got a meeting somewhere. Or I'm somewhere. Sure. So, and then if you say no to someone, it's hard. You're I, a mean guy. They, well, they remember that and they call you an ass and all. Yeah, that. it happens, but it's hard. But I'm just saying. What I'm saying is like sometimes, like those guys who make a whole lot of money, like Shaquille O'Neal and and, and those guys, they say, watch. They can go and they can probably they probably own like private islands somewhere they can go and just sometimes you just want to go where people don't even know you it's weird you want to go like you want to buy a ranch in montana and just go somewhere where people don't know you a lot of a lot of actors do they have like houses sure. with and i can't afford to do that so it's like but i guess i'm surprised to hear you say you have this newfound love it's good to hear you say that because for a while there in the middle like march april of this year it seemed like you just wanted. You were almost thinking about leaving MMA. Yeah, you were it done. Was. But then on the flip side, I thought the newfound love would come along with. I want to be in the UFC. I want to fight in the. You know what I mean? This well, is the UFC what, is not MMA. Sure, sure. No, that's fine. I guess you surprised me on both ends here. Uh, I guess. But you want to fight for many more years. I, I I still got a couple more years in me. Yeah, and I, after I'm done with MMA, I want to go and do boxing. Really? Yeah, I, I've done everything but boxing. I, I want like high level boxing. Yeah, you, you heard Kimbo and Roy Jones are gonna have some sort of uh, exhibition match. Oh, that's Did cool. you hear about that? No, I don't know. is that the kind of thing you want to do, or no, like I want, a celebrity I, thing, or no? I I want to I want to go and try to box somebody. I don't want to box the top boxer because I'm not a boxer, but I want to go and and do a boxing match. I want to go and do I want to go do kickboxing. You know, what I'm saying sometimes I want I want to go and f I want to go and put on exciting fights. I think I'd be exciting for a boxer because. Because you know, right now boxing is kind of boring. Like nobody take chances. I'm coming the way my style is coming out and, and boxing. I'm coming either I'm gonna knock you out or, or I'm gonna get knocked out. Right. It's hard to do that in MMA because you you gotta be you gotta you can't come out. Uh, you know you know your guns, you know blazing blazing because you know somebody take you down. They waiting for you to overcome and take you down. So MMA is kind of your stand up is different when it's wrestling in there. Sure. But in boxing, uh, kickboxing, you just just go. Is there a chance that after this one fight is over, then you go straight to boxing, or do you think you'll stick around in MMA a little bit? I, I don't know. It's, it, it depends on uh, where the money take me. As uh, I think a famous man once said, the cheddar makes it better. Damn right. It is, it's a lot. Of, I tell that to everyone. Yeah, it's a lot of me behind. And then behind I quote that. you. There's a lot of me behind that because people don't. I think the most fans they don't know what goes on. We train six days a week. Um, I train three to four times a day, and, and and so by Friday, you hurting. Your body is hurting, but you still you stiff, but you still got to get up and go train three or four times that day, and and then you think about the uh, how much money you're getting paid. That's the only thing that goes to my. I don't know. I don't know what goes to other fighters. Like oh, how famous I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't resonate with me. Like I'm thinking. To me, I'm thinking about <sighs> how much money I'm getting for this fight. This is what keeps me going. How much money I can save up for my kids. So. So my kids can have a good college education, and and so I can buy me this this new car I want to. That, I like that stuff. Uh, I want I want the uh, you know I'm waiting for Lamborghini to make a photo. You know what I'm saying? I'm saving up for this. I want my kid to go to Harvard or something like that. That's that's what keeps me. I don't mm. I don't think about oh how many guys are gonna come a beg to buy me a drink next time I'm go to the bar. <laughs> are you making more now than you ever did? Yeah. Or as champion, did you make more? 
uh, honestly, I, I honestly I did used to make more back when uh, I used to make I used to make more back when I was uh, when I was champion. Yeah, because the pay per view numbers and stuff mm. is different. Everything's okay. different. But now, now I, honestly, now I'm making I'm making I'm making less. But but people can argue because you know I'm winning I'm winning less. But I still do the same amount of work. I still go train just as hard. And I still go and, and put just as many butts in the seat. To me, it's not about that. But you know what I'm saying? It's like my my main shout is not I always just I want to make more money. It's like I want to be respected and stuff too. Right. Just felt like my last fight, I, I went out there, I, I didn't pull out of my fight, uh, and I, I put my, my health on the line and stuff like that, and I fought. Why didn't I, you pull out? I didn't I didn't pull out because um, it's Japan. Like uh, you know what I'm saying? I felt like they didn't they didn't have enough um, pride veterans on the card. I just felt like if I would have pulled out, I just felt like it would have been a bad look on that card, and I didn't want to uh, disappoint the Japanese fans. That, uh, see, the Jap- what people don't know about me, I'm very loyal, and I think the Japanese fans, they, they've they been very good to me over the years, and, and I really it's no secret, I really like them. I like the way, how, how respectful they are. See, like the Japanese fans, like if I lived in Japan and I was real famous hmm. in Japan, then it wouldn't bother me because they're very respectful. If I'm talking to somebody, they wait till I get done talking, and then they ask me, Really nice for a picture, and if I'm eating and stuff like that, they they sit there and wait till you get done eating, and they very respectful, and and, and so I appreciate I, I do anything for a Japanese fan, and 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 so I, I went sometimes out, a little too much, it's too much. I went out yeah. there and fought, and I I even tried to I did the slam, and it took everything, and it took all the energy I had that, that one slam, but I did it because I love Japanese fans so much, and that's why I didn't want to pull out, and I didn't want to mess up the card for the UFC because you know is that why you miss weight because you weren't. I couldn't you run. You were 100%. I couldn't run. So you knew? Yeah, I knew. Did you tell them? What? Who, the UFC? They yeah. Knew, they knew I was injured, yeah. Really? So when you told them you weren't weren't going to make weight, were they surprised? Well, I, I, I didn't know I wasn't going to make weight. Okay. When did you come to that conclusion? Like, I, I, I walked the streets with you on a Thursday night. Then the weigh-ins uh, were yeah, Saturday I, morning because it was Japan. Yeah, I just thought I just thought I could cut I, I thought I could cut the weight. I didn't, I didn't know that um, I didn't know that I was going to have to lose over 20 pounds. Hmm. I just I thought I could I thought I could make the weight. And in hindsight, do you regret taking the fight? Do you regret sticking on the card? I just re- I just regret losing to a, a person like Ryan Bader. He sucks. What suck. do you mean? <laughs> he sucks. I say it to his face. He sucks. He talked all that all that trash on how he was gonna how he was gonna knock me out. He he obviously knew I was injured because I didn't make weight. He think I took the fight light, and I, and I talked to him man and man. I said, look, just make it a sight and fight. I knew it was a chance I was gonna lose. But I, I don't want to lose a boring fight in Japan. He made the fight really boring. Got no respect for a guy like that. Got no, he suck. Right. Like, if I knew that I'm fighting a guy who's not 100%, I'm finna show out. I'm finna go and do whatever. He could have he took me down and won on points, beat me up a little bit, and stood up and, and, and did his thing. He, he, was, he was winning the stand-up, too. I don't, I mean, what people don't, don't know about me is, like, I have no ego. I don't care. You know, it sucks when you lose fights. It hurts me and stuff like that. But it hurts me more if I lose a boring fight. Hmm. If I win a boring fight, I don't like it. So you would rather him knock you out? Yeah, a sight and fight, going, and I go out knock, for, the, for the fans, yeah. I, I, ask, ask, ask Van Lee. You know, me and Van Lee had some, some wars. Right. He, he gave me two of the worst ass whoopings ever. And, you know, I, I got knocked out. I never assaulted with him about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was a sight and fight. Like, the fans in Japan, they come up and tell me, oh, they're like, Love your warrior spirit. Mm. That's why they like me. They, they, I love your warrior spirit, and and you fight like samurai. You know they call me Coco Jean Samurai, and and, and so much honor. Cause, it, Cause after my fight, I didn't make the excuse. I was like, oh, you win. I'm, it, it happens. Like I'm a fighter. I've been a fighter my whole life, and people don't understand that about me. Like the new, new the, the the new fans and stuff like that. They don't understand. Like the fighters, these new fighters, they have no honor. Like John Jones poking people in the, in the eye and and kicking the knee back. That's 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 like that's something like you think he's dirty. That's very dirty. Like kicking somebody. Look how he look how he was doing. The Vitor. Vitor, right. Vitor take the fight on short notice and stuff like that. And this is how he respects him by kicking his knee backwards and stuff like that. Like you're supposed to be a man of God and stuff like that. You can you can you can injure somebody. You can you can sever their career. You can you know what I'm saying. You can you can mess people up for for life kicking a knee back like that. And you know what I'm saying. And he and he and he, and he does it repeatedly over and over. Like. That's, that's, to me, that, that has no honor. I take a lot of honor in fighting. That's, he has no he has no honor. Mm. Like, I, I have honor when it comes to fighting. Do you feel he was dirty in the cage with you? Yeah, I feel he was. I don't I don't complain about it. You know, mm. 
he he knows how to use his reach. You know what I'm saying? He he poked me in the eye a couple times. I ain't complaining about it. I'm 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 a fighter, stuff like that. You know, and I just felt it. But when I see him doing it to Vitor, like you know what I'm saying? Like he got to protect his balance. But Vitor took the fight on short notice. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he was like really gunning for his knee, like kicking his knee backwards. And and I know how he felt. I'm like, he he messed my knee up like that. Like I don't I don't understand how sport don't make that illegal. Cause think about uh, John Jones. He's fighting all the top guys. And he, say if he you know he. The knee, what if he put out? What if he put everybody out? The it'll knee be, injury that you're talking about with Bader is it? No, nah, di- nah, that's a different. A different that's, knee that's injury. A different, okay. that's a different knee injury. Um, what do you make of John Jones? By the way, like you know, I don't know if you saw the stuff that was going on in Toronto, but he was getting booed, like really booed. I've, I've heard. I've heard. Yeah. Well, well, why do you think people don't like him so much? Because he's fake. What do you mean by that? What do you think I mean by? It? But I mean, what, what, what does fake mean? Like, how do we know that what we see? Like, I, I start. I'm starting to think that we're starting to see the real John Jones a little bit. He's starting to speak his mind a little more. Um, perhaps in the beginning, he was trying too hard, you know, trying to get everyone to like him. So he was really trying too hard. But from a fighter's perspective, you've probably been in you know intimate settings with him, whatever. What do you mean by him being fake? Like, the guy we see at the press conferences, that's not the same guy. Am I off here? Are you sleeping right now? But your eyes are still because I know some people. <laughs> He's fake, man. That's all. Uh, I say. That's all. I, I I don't I don't agree with his fighting style. I think I, I think I can beat John Jones. I know I can beat him. A John Jones type of guy, you got to fight twice. You know what I'm saying? Is it? He's just he's just one of those guys that you know you just got to get past. You got to get past him poking you in your eyes. And and John McCarthy did a, a big John did a great great job of having him keep his fingers closed and stuff and I heard him kept saying over and over but you know what I'm saying like that the knee the knee kick back was like what what if he what if he everybody he fights he put him he put him out for like mm. six months, eight months. Who's else who else gonna be in the weight class to fight? I don't see how even his even his elbow, his spinning elbow, like you're not supposed to strike to the back of the head, but if you go back and watch it, all, all those strikes land on the back of the head. I don't understand why he's allowed to do these things. You know, I just don't understand it. But, you know, it's, it looked flash, It looked cool and stuff like that. But I'm just saying, I'm not even tripping on the elbows that hit you in the back of the head. I'm I'm tripping on the eye pokes and and, and the kicking the knee backwards. That's, they're just, they're just un- honorable, you know what I'm saying? In the division right now, because he's fought a lot of the top guys, including yourself, who do you think has the best chance of, of beating him? And there's still Hendo out there who you beat. I, I, I think that um I think that Rashad has a really good chance of beating him. Really? Yeah, Rashad fought him after coming off an of injury. And Rashad was out for a while, like... You know, uh, John Jones is one of the best fighters in the world. You can't come off a of, off a of, uh, injury and fight the one of the best in the world. You need a warm up fight. What do you mean? Rashad fought in January of that year. I know, but he just come off a knee injury surgery or something, yeah. then, right? Nah. He yeah. had some type of injury. But he had fought twice. He beat Tito and then he fought. No, nah, yeah, yeah, Rashad had just come well, off. Maybe something. you know something. Uh, yeah, he, he, he Were was you rusty. rooting for Rashad that night? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I was. Wow. You must really not like John Jones. I just, I just, I just don't like what John Jones stands for. Like uh, I just don't I don't like what he stands for. Like he is like he's a re- very good fighter, and he, I think he can do a lot more damage, and I think he can be more exciting if he you know what I'm saying fought more up to you know he's he's a good he's a good fighter. I just don't like some of his fighting styles and stuff like that, and I just don't I just don't like how he crawls. I just don't like how he crawled. He crawls in like what you supposed to do? Like wh- like what you supposed to do? If somebody yeah, crawling? you he did that right? Right. What yeah. you supposed to do? Somebody crawling in on the cage? You just. All these mind tricks. I just don't like. I just don't like people like that. Like I won't come, come on and fight MMA. MMA is, is is um not what it used to be when I started. You know, what I'm saying like MMA got famous for guys getting there, fighting and going at it and putting on a great show. That's how MMA got popular. Now it's like, it's, it's it, you know our sport evolved so fast. I'm scared it's going to evolve into like boxing, the way boxing is. And I think I can help boxing out. And I mm-hmm. think I can help MMA out. I think I can, but. You know, saying so there's a couple different type of fighters out there. I think the fighters that like how I am is a dying breed. You got fighters like me, Vandalay, or you know, you got Chuck Liddell, you got um Chet Congo, you got all these fighters that, that, that come come to fight and, and we show up. You, you got like fighters like BJ Penn, you know, you know, who else? There's a lot of fighters like us like that come you know you're gonna get a show, you know you're gonna mm-hmm. get a good fight, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 but then now you got these now you got these other guys that you, you you're gonna watch you you wanna like you know, what I'm saying what, what's going to happen is you, you know you, most most time you know the fight going to go to the decision and a lot of guys fighting not to not to lose instead of fighting to put on a good show. And I think fighters like me and and um, other exciting, really exciting fighters are, are dying breed. 
How would you uh, characterize your relationship with Dana these days? I, I don't know. I, like, me and Dana, we, we cool sometimes. We like, me and Dana, we text. And then I'm going to tell you guys something, man, about Dana, man. Dana is, he is really a cool he cool, he's a cool guy, you know what I'm saying? Dana is an alpha, you know what I'm saying? I'm an alpha. Sometimes alpha... I know, I feel it. Yeah, they, All but, of us, we're sort of on the same page, right? Well, we have, we're on the same wavelength. Well, you 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 should hope so. Right, well. Well, you should hope so. I'm getting there. Well, you either born there... Uh, oh, really? You born alpha. Really? Born, something you born into. You, just, you can't develop it? It's born. It's a, so it's not, it's not a... You believe it's a, it's, a, it's a nature thing. It's a nature thing. For me... I think it's nurture. Well, listen, honestly, like in a, in a while, like the, the the lion, he's alpha and stuff like that. But when he gets old, the younger alpha will come up there, and they go, and, you know. There so, you go. But but, that, still time. but but still, but that young alpha, he was he was born alpha though. That that that, that lion that was born beta, he can never even he would ne- he wouldn't even get the balls to even test that alpha. Well, or you know, if he do, you know, and sometimes different ways. Different ways. Well, you know, you can go different well, ways. Well, you wish for thinking. You well, have you, you there. You go again with, with your wish for thinking. Look at this. Well, look at this studio. That's good. This is my house. We're human. Betas, <laughs> betas are, are. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, listen, I'm not putting down betas. No, okay. Now, don't don't get me wrong, people. When I say it. there's a lot of betas in the world, right, and stuff like that, and, and people really and they, they, they're really smart. You know what I'm saying? A lot of time, but alphas. No, we ain't always the most intelligent. No, no one will, so, okay. no one will ever say that. Okay. But I want to. I don't want to get you off this tangent here. You were saying something about Dana that he's really cool, but the alphas. Yeah, we we but you know, like yeah. okay. This is the thing about Dana and the UFC. Dana. Uh, is looking out for his brand, the UFC, and sure. stuff like that. I got nothing against him, and you know, what I'm saying he want to do what's best for for his brand and everything. And and Dana, he's a good guy. Me and Dana always been cool. I'm trying to tell you, even before I I came and, and fought in, in UFC, Dana, me and Dana was cool. He used to give me tickets to the UFC. And didn't they buy WFA just to get you? Yeah, essentially, yeah, you and, and Machida, right? Yeah, Dana, and, and listen, Dana saved my ass. You know, what I'm saying back how so? Then, uh, back then, man, I was going broke, man. You uh-huh. know, what I'm saying I, I ain't gonna lie. I, I was going broke because I like to spend money too much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dana, Dana, you know what I'm saying? That's why I did so many favors for them. That's why I fought um, uh, um, Jardine. That's why I did so many things. That's why I didn't want to pull out of fights when I was injured and stuff like that. And and Dana's a cool guy, I'm telling you. But, you know what I'm saying, he's looking out for the brand. But what what but what I think that they don't understand is that I'm looking out for my brand because – because after I retire, the UFC still is going to be there. The UFC is still going to make money. Still, UFC is still going to be going strong after I retire. And, and But after I retire, you know what I'm saying, I got to find other ways to make money. I got to find other ways to um, uh, get my kids, you know what I'm saying, through school and put my, my son through private school and all this. And I got to find other ways to have money to make it rain in the club. You know what, right. what I'm saying? But the UFC is still going to be going strong. Like, the UFC ain't going to be giving me no, oh, Rampage, you used to do a good job for us, huh? Here goes this money sure. every month. No, but see, but people don't understand that. They, are, I think a lot of, I think a lot of times the fans they don't know what they're talking about. They, the fans are selfish. They don't see you retired. They don't understand that. They don't look into my life and see what what bills I got to pay. They don't know that I still take care of my mother and father back at home in Memphis and put my little sister through college and and my and my older sister taking care of her and why she having stuff. Like they don't they don't know this stuff. They don't they don't know what the things I do with and stuff. So I, I only I know that I know that I got half of my friends. Uh, employed because the, cause the recession is bad and mm. a lot of my friends lost you know lost their jobs I can't afford it so I'm so I got them doing stuff for me you know take they don't know that you know they don't know how much my bills is a, a, a month and they don't they don't know like when I'm thinking like oh man when I retire what what I'm going to do the UFC is not going to pay me every month so so I respect Dana and I respect what he what him looking out for his brand and stuff like that but I just want people to respect me. And, and respect. I'm looking out for my brand. I've I, I, I've created Rampage. You know, what I'm saying my cousin named me that when I was eight years old, and and I created Rampage to the person he he is now, where where people will want to buy this. Mm. And, and and do you know how much money I make off this? Mm-mm. That's what I'm saying. Okay. You feel me? Yeah, I do feel you. You know, I asked Dana about you this weekend in Toronto uh, after the UFC uh, 152 fight. And it's kind of interesting to hear what you said. And now I want to play for you what he said about you. All right. Uh, This is just on Saturday night. Okay. Uh, We have that clip. Isaac, all right, here's Dana White talking about Rampage Jackson. You'll be able to you hear You better not been talking shit. No, 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 no. Actually, someone was trying. I'll explain it because you may not be able to hear the, the people asking the questions, no. me and this other guy, but you'll hear Dana very clearly. Here we go. My, ra- my relationship with Rampage is like a fucking roller coaster, man. One minute we're cool, next minute he wants to kill me. I don't know. Right now, I don't know. <laughs> it's one or the other. We're either cool or he wants to kill me right this second. <laughs> 
Someone, uh-huh. someone's asking about the Flyway tweet. He tweeted tonight? Yeah, it was something. Something real friendly? Yeah. No? And I guess he wants to kill me tonight. <laughs> I guess it's one of those days. So there you go. That's uh, kind of what you said, essentially. Some what? days you're cool. So so let's find out. Uh, are you cool right now or do you want to kill him? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm cool. It with that. sounds like you're cool. I'm cool. I don't think my, my tweet was, was, was that bad. I was just, I was drinking beers at the house, kind of, you know what I'm saying? I was just kind of disappointed. Like, I, I, About I, what? The flyweights. You thought it was a boring fight. I just, I just, you know, I just, yeah. But this, this is my opinion, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, no one's going to hate you for your opinion. Okay, yeah. He wasn't happy about that. I don't know if you heard. He went on a whole, not about you, about the people booing the flyweights and saying that he, he actually said, if you thought the flyweights had a boring fight, I'm paraphrasing here, don't ever buy a UFC pay-per-view. Do me a favor, don't ever buy a UFC pay-per-view again. Okay, I won't ever buy a UFC <laughs> pay-per-view again. <laughs> That's what he said. I won't, because that, that, I'm not used to, I guess I'm not used to seeing like, they're like two, they're like two swollen midgets fighting. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was it was bad. They was so they like I just not used to. They're talented, that. man. They they are. They, they listen. They, I like I like I like those guys. I like going. I'm just saying. Like, I'm just saying. It was just missing something for me. I'm sorry. Sure. But different but, strokes for different folks. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Like right. everybody's not going to like the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like some people like to see little bit of guys uh, go at it, and some people don't. But it is good to hear that you're at least on somewhat good terms. Are you gonna talk at some point? Are you gonna try to clear the air? Or I don't know. Like I don't. I let my manager. I let my manager talk to him because okay. I don't. You don't want to call him personally. Try to have a meeting. Yeah, because yeah, I'm. I'm not. <laughs> you know, it, it, some, it, it can go wrong. Like 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 I said, like sure. two apples. But then, like he can say something like I disagree, and then we there we go. Then me and him arguing. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, I want to ask you about something that the, part of this whole going backwards here, um, this fighters only story that came out. Can you clear it up for us? The thing that happened with they said that the, the UFC doctor gave you TRT and all I that. I don't know. Who, I don't know how anybody would ever. I don't know how they got that. I said the UFC doctor gave me TRT. What happened? Can you, forget about the story. And I like those guys. I'm not trying to throw them under the bus or anything. But what exactly happened there with the doctor and the TRT before the beta? Okay, fight? when I got when I got injured for when I was training for the beta fight, I had one month. To go to the fight, the choice was either pull out or go and see this other doctor that can, you know, what I'm saying maybe help me out because that's what that's what the surgeon told me. The one who actually did, he said, he said, right now you didn't tear anything, it'll heal up if you don't fight, you just stop training, you, and, and you know, what I'm saying so I was like, oh, and I went to go see my other doctor, Doctor Kessler. I said, I still want to do this fight. Is there anything you can help me with? He said, all right, let's talk to this. This this guy he he's um I forgot exactly he said he's into wellness and stuff like that he can do acupuncture and all the different stuff and I saw the guy he was like he said well um if you you still want to fight I can put you on uh, testosterone it give you you know what I'm saying a little you know a little bit more oomph and you know you you know what I'm saying make you where you can train and um and then you can still make this fight but he said but first. I got to see if your levels are low. Hmm. If your levels are, are aren't low, then you know what I'm saying you don't. I can't do that for you. Then you just other things you can do. You got to do acupuncture and just go train easy and stuff like that. And so he tested my levels, and he, and he said, "Oh, yeah, you you, you qualify for it." He, he said, "Actually, your levels are very low, and we should we should bring you up anyway, whether you had this injury injury or not." And he did that, and I felt good right away. And I and I and I trained. I still couldn't run on it really. I tried a little bit, but you know, what I'm saying the pain was was not as severe and stuff like that. He was right. And I, I made it to the fight, and the other doctor was right too. I ripped it in the fight, and I had to get surgery. Mm. And then then um, but he cleared it. He, what he did, he just told them that I was on it. Cause it was like them what, being the UFC. Yeah, he just told the UFC, this fighter's on this. Yeah, it's not nothing illegal. No surprises. He get, he did he did his thing and so I wouldn't get like a federal drug test or whatever. I don't know. He he just told them like, oh, this fight is on this it's like it's a medical thing. Like if I would have had like um diabetes or something he you know, you had to tell him. Same thing. Okay. And, and that's what he did and, and after the fight and stuff like that, after after while I went back to see my doctor, he's, you know, he took me off of it. I don't need it. So I don't I don't So even, it was just a one shot deal. Yeah, I just I just did it and it helped me out and stuff like that. And I, he took me off. I don't I don't use it. I'm not saying that I would, you know, would never go back to it later if I ever needed it again, but right I'm I not thought on it, it was the kind of thing that if you did it once you have to stay with it for your whole life. Uh no, I never heard that. Oh, okay. So and 
it wasn't the UFC doctor though, because that's what it said in the article. I don't, yeah, the the guy in the article, the guy that wrote in or the article, was he, he wasn't by he, the UFC doctor. He was no, it wasn't even recommended by the UFC. Okay. The, the guy that who said that he didn't, even, he wasn't even the one interviewing me. Like somebody else interviewed me and sent the interview over to him. He's him being a British guy and me being a black guy. You know what I'm saying? Lost in translation. He's lost in translations. Okay. And he just he couldn't understand my accent. I guess and he just said he just he just wrote whatever. I don't know who the guy is, but I hope I never meet him. <laughs> so the next time you fight, you won't be doing this? No. You don't need it? I don't need it. Okay. Well, that's good. Better that way. It's a hot topic in our sport, and good to clear it up. Well, you know, every, like like I said, like everybody have a problem. I think people need to... Um, I think people need to wise up and, and mind their own business a lot of times. Yeah. Like, if it's nothing... If it's not anything legal, then... That no one's abusing it. I don't. I don't see nothing wrong with it. somebody's older and they're not abusing it and stuff like that. Like, like say, say you know, like, so what? If they're not abusing it and they need it as a doctor and 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 they truly and the doctor you know gives it to them. Like, so what? Like, if somebody had cancer and they can cure it, you gonna get mad? At, like, you gonna get mad at this guy because he's trying to cure his cancer? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, people. Just, I just think people need to grow up. We're running out of time. I want to hit on a few other things, and then we'll let you go. All and right. I appreciate the time very much. I was told by good sources, and correct me if I'm wrong here, you received an interesting uh, text message from a Matt Mitrione. Yeah, Matt Mitrione. He heard about that. Uh, recently, right? Recently, yeah. What did. happened there? Well, me and Matt, you know what I'm saying, we, had our, we bumped heads uh, a few times, like on Ultimate Fighter Show, and he heard that um, I had to pull out of this fight with Glover and stuff like that, and he, and he thought, it, and he and he knows there's like might be my last time fighting in, in the UFC, and he want to take his opportunity to kick my ass. He think he can kick my ass because uh, we kind of like bumped heads a few times, and I was like, I I told I, I told him I'd be down to fight him on the show, like him, me, and Titus had a problem, and me and Matreon, because you know so I felt like you know since some of my guys got cheated and stuff on the show, and I. I, he beat a couple of my guys, and they, you know, they, those guys were acting real cocky, and I wanted, to, I, I wanted to fight him. Right. So, so he, he see his opening now, and he, he said, "Man, I, you know, since he's not never, he want, he want to fight me." He reached out to you to tell you this. Yeah, I he's re- a heavyweight. You're a light heavyweight. Yeah, but you know, I don't care. You know, it, you know, what I'm saying to me, it's like I respect him for I, 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 I'm a fighter. You know, I respect that. You know, what I'm saying I don't care. I will fight a guy bigger than me. I don't care. You know, what I'm saying. If he if he if he think he can knock me out, let's go, let's go. He 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 said on the show he think he can beat me. He want he want he want to beat me and stuff like that. I don't know if they played. See, I didn't watch the other fight. I don't know if they played in uh, any of the episodes. But the cameras was sure. there when we bumped in. I I think it was a while ago, but I, I vaguely remember you guys because you were on opposing teams, right? Yeah. He was on Rashad's team. Yeah. But did that come out of nowhere? Because he's not really. Again, we, not we, the same. We we've had problems like after the fight with him and Congo, he said some stuff. Okay. And uh, he actually. Um, Said some stuff about one of my teammates now, Big Rob Braun. Rob Braun wanted to fight him. Rob is um, it's gunning for him. So it's kind of like, man, he got a big mouth, man. He 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 says, he, you know, what I'm saying he says some stuff. I wouldn't mind closing closing his mouth for him. I, so is that the fight you want next? I don't. I like, haven't asked you that question yet. I, so. I, like honestly, like I said, I don't care. I I I want I want to fight Glover, but he's not. Sure, he's fighting like, like Maldonado. Pe- yeah, like so he's he's fighting. I, I fight whoever. So if you did fight him, would it be like at a catch weight, or would you just yeah. be at heavyweight? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be, I guess catch weight, but I don't care. You're going down in weight right now. You just told me. Yeah, but you know, what I'm saying still, I don't care. I mean, like I won't be. I'm gonna have to cut to 205. I want to walk around my 220, 225. That sure. I, I fight when 220. That's what. I, that's how much I weigh when I fight anyway. Right. Half the time. Is the UFC interested in this? I don't know. I don't know what. He, I, don't, I don't know what his relationship is with Dana. And stuff like that. I guess I don't know if Joe Silva got a. Uh, uh, I don't know if Joe Silva got a match make everything, but you know how I feel about Joe Silva. Oh, well, I don't get. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Like, okay. I've Silva, heard you say some things about. Well, him. Joe Silva got a match make, so I don't know if 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 I don't know how to, I don't know how it worked. Okay. All right. So you're saying, Mitrione? No. Yes. I'm not quite I, sure where you stand on this. I'm down to fight Mitrione. Okay. All like, right. but but what people don't understand, like, I don't know why. People think that <laughs> we fight who we want to fight in the sure, UFC. Sure. People think that. Like I, I see that on Twitter all the time. Oh, what happened? Oh, where you want to fight? Like, yeah, I'm, I want to fight whoever. But it's up to the UFC. It's not like boxing in that in that respect. Boxers yeah. can fight whoever they they want to fight, and they can back out of. They can you know duck people who they want to duck. Like me, I never ducked any fighter ever. And and only fighter, only fight I ever tried to duck was Matt Hamill. 
It's the only, it's the only, because I just didn't want to fight court, him. Yeah. I didn't want to fight didn't him. Get your juices flowing. It didn't. Get, yeah, I didn't see. I didn't see nothing. I didn't see what I gained by fighting him. Like, and and sure enough, look at what happened. It was a boring fight. I feel like so. So what's next for you here? I am what I go back and I start training. I see what's up. I don't know. I I don't know what's going on. You know, I'm just gonna do me. You know, what I'm saying I got some talks for, for reality shows, some some movies. There's like a lot of stuff. On hand, I just got to see what's up, and you know. Um, you gonna go back to the movies? Yeah. Wait, wasn't there supposed to be an A team too? No, we never. That oh. never was. You know, you know. So I'm, I'm right. I'm actually writing movies. I got this. Really. You know, this crazy MMA movie that that um got in my head. I'm doing music. I got. I'm starting to get a little bit better in my music. Oh yeah, you, you didn't you come out with a rap song? I got a couple of them. Sp- spit some rhymes. Is that how they no. say? It? Come on. No. The people are watching. I this don't is care. a good way to get out of the. <laughs> I don't care. Come on. No. In your movies, do you have a role for like uh, perhaps like a Jewish reporter, white guy from Canada, anything? No. I, like a reporter type, no. just to ask the hard questions. You know. No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare do a movie with you. Oh really? I wouldn't dare. You 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 would bring down the ratings of, on the movie. <laughs> My Q rating. Yeah, 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 it'd be bad. They do those like focus groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie. The movie. Any movie with you in it would just flop just because you in it. Wow. Yeah, I, I'm so su- actually I'm surprised that your your um show is. I know. Popular, cause right. You pretty. You like, said it was the best show on Twitter. I did say that, you didn't I? Because <laughs> you know why? Why? Because you told me to I say didn't that. I tell you to say that. You told me to say no. No, listen. You tweeted. People were so, people were very surprised. They were like, "Wow, you and you and Rampage are friends." Yeah, you know, only reason why I said it was the best show is because I was going to be on there. That's that's my reason. Oh, why. You were trying to elevate. The <laughs> show. Yeah, because Twitter, you can only say so much. Right. And I'm like, forty characters. Exactly. Honestly, I'm hating on Twitter. I have to say that. Why? Because you're down on it, you mean? I don't like it that much. A lot of negativity. A lot of negativity on Twitter. Like, like I get a lot of people. I get people follow me just to hate on me, and I'll be trying to block them. But you know what I'm saying? I just Ara. don't understand that. So I, I, I don't tweet that much no more. Ara, yeah. Um, we have uh, Matt Mitrione. He just called into the show. What? Um, he's on hold. If, if put you'd that like motherfucker to talk on the phone. You want to talk to him? F- fuck yeah. F- fuck Matt Mitrione just called in. Yes. Ara, we have pal. him on the line. Matt, are you there? I'm here. What's going on? What's up, Eric? What's up, Rampage? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> What's going? Well, I guess um, you were listening. Let's, let's get some. Yeah, well, yeah, I heard a little bit of it. Hopefully, let's uh, let's get some shit started up here, man. I I, I, got, I told I got told Rampage. It's uh, it's something I'd love to happen. That the fights that are available in the heavyweight division. I asked for seven different people, and everybody said no. And I got one that you know I, I've already got, been offered a fight. On December 29th, and you know, no disrespect to Phil DeFreeze, but <clears throat> kind of like Rampage said about Matt Hamlin, doesn't want to eat my juices flowing. So, fuck it. <clears throat> you know, Rampage is a swinger. He doesn't want to fight people, want to wrestle. You know, he, uh, fuck it, went in all, in all season. He walks around as much as I weigh. So, you know, we can we can get down and, and we'll, put a, we'll put a weight limit on it. We'll have to make a catch weight. I have to cut and get to a number. And uh, it'll be a fan. I think the, the fight would, uh, it'll be a fight. I think the fans would love. And uh, they know we're going to get in there and scrap and earn our money. We both have heart. We both bring it. I think it'll be a beautiful fight. I think it, I think it'd be um, a pleasure for me to finally slam him like a big heavyweight, show everybody how strong I really am. <laughs> well, what do you what do you I make be... what do you make of him saying he fights at what you walk around at? That seems like a shot of your weight. I'm just saying that, Matt, because he's in studio and you're not. <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry about. It. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I think I think Rampage would be one of the most fun people in the, in the world to punch in the face. I think so, it'd be great. So it seems like there's a mutual respect here to a degree. You both want to bang, but uh, like, are you are you annoyed by this or rampage? Or? I, I have to honestly say that I'm. I, I respect him for reaching out, and saying that he won to fight because we talked about it on the show, and you know, what I'm saying we we didn't see eye to eye. You know, what I'm saying he had some smart remarks, and you know, what I'm saying it, like he ain't no like he ain't no pussy about it. Like a lot, a lot of times, people man, y'all just don't understand. A lot of fighters out there, they they like the being called a fight and stuff like that, but. A lot of times, man, there's a lot of pussies out there. You see a lot of pussies walking those cages sometimes. Mm-hmm. You can tell by how they fight, you know what I'm saying? And and Major Allen, he do he do bring it. But you know what I'm saying? If he step in the cage with me, he's gonna regret that damn phone call. He's gonna regret that text. They're, they're gonna be hey, one. Funny, I, I never regretted going to the bank a day in my life. Yeah, you and I never regret going with that window. You go, you, go, you, go, you, go, you go regret going to the hospital, trust me. Hey, it's okay. If I come with a check with it, it'll be all right. All it'll, right. Be, it'll be rough when those smelling salts will be pretty sharp. Yeah, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna enjoy spending it. <laughs> you never know. Okay. You never know. You ain't gonna draw hey, spending. Buddy. You ain't gonna hey, draw. You, you, you gonna be paying? For, hey, you lucky UFC paid for your doctor bills because that's, hey. that's where your money will be going, homie. I'm hey, telling you. I'm telling you. This is a bad. This hey, is the yeah. worst time. This is the worst time to call me out, dog. When I'm getting up to 100 percent, you you have you having bad timing. 
this might be one of the this might be the first fight you ever turned into a wrestler on ever. Oh yeah. Okay. So where do we go from here? Should, well, I, should I call I, up the uh, UFC? Man, yeah. so I, I'll fight Matt. I'll fight Matt tomorrow. Okay. I don't care. I'll, I'm I'll fight New York. Let's do it. I'm ready. I'll do it. Wait, you, you name it, brother. Hey, as long as there's money in the line, I'm down, brother. Yeah. I'm down. All right. Well, it's out there now. People know. Matt called in. He said, you, you want to say anything to Matt before we let him go? Fuck you. <laughs> hey, you. I can't wait to punch you in the face. Hey, train, hey, train hard, man. Train really hard. Hey, for real. Hey, we're going to wrestling. Okay. Yeah, I ain't wrestling. I ain't, I ain't wrestling you. I like standing up. Right. I ain't wrestling. Right. You work. Hey, you no. work on your wrestling. You work on your wrestling. Hey. Whatever you do ain't gonna be good enough. You work on your wrestling. You that's what okay. you do. All right, little dude. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell you. Me. I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna whoop your ass and still do it. I'm gonna tell, tell you. I'm gonna knock you the fuck out. Hey, I'll tell I'm, you this. I'm gonna I'm knock you the fuck out. Left punch, hook. Left hook. First, left hook to the chin. Punch, right hook. Good night, Irene. Left hook right to your motherfucking chin. That's where you going. Last fight in the UFC too, but that would be a ugly way to go out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> man, you have no you idea, Matt Matron. You have no idea. I thought whoop your I ass. I'm gonna embarrass. I'm gonna embarrass the shit out of you. Dude, you go change your clown, name please, and you, you go move to a third world country. Hey, hey, you you whoop me, you clown me. How's that, man? You go, you go get clown. You. you go get clown. Hey, hey, how you gonna how you gonna clown when you when you already knocked out? Oh well, man, you're like, oh the, uh, man, you gonna get clown, dog. No, you going you gonna get clown for real. Hey, dude, hey, I thought knock you out. I'm gonna do that Korean dude dance on you, that that, that Opa Gangnam style and shit, right on top of your motherfucking ass. Do the, the fucking horsey dance on your motherfucking ass. I, man, I thought knock you out. I'm gonna call the Korean dude to come in the fucking cage and do it right. He go, we gonna learn how to do the dance. We gonna be doing it right on top of your motherfucking ass. Hey, you know what I think, man? I think it'll be. I'll buy you a drink with, with my win money after after you wake up. Yeah, yeah. If if I hey if I if I lose to you. I'm fucking quitting uh, alcohol for the rest of my life. That's a promise. Hey, well, how about this? If you lose me, why don't you not fight the UFC anymore? If, if you're, if you're, if you're that good. Wow. Hey, I'm already, I'm already on that road anyway. I'm already on that road. I take, I take that shit. Hey, hey, motherfucker. Hey, put, hey, hey, let's do it. Hey, let's do it. Hey, let's do it like this then. Let's do it like this. Winner takes all. Wow. What, is that in both purses? Yeah. When, hey, I got a big, I got a big boy purse too, baby. Winner takes all. I know, I know. Winner takes all. Yeah, that would, I'm talking about your, I'm talking about your sponsor money, everything. Winner takes all. Ooh, it, that'd be sexy. Ooh. Winner takes <laughs> all. Put on the line. Winner takes <laughs> all. I are you that? Are you that confident? That's, that's how confident. That's how confident I am. That I'm gonna hand you the worst motherfucking ass whooping in your motherfucking life. I've seen you Man, fight. I've, I've, I've seen you fight. I seen, I seen you fight. I I, yeah, I seen you fight. Sure you fought and you one. Saw you your fought. Boy run away from me too. Oh man, you hey, you oh. you ain't got hey, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing on my homeboy. You fought an injured. Uh, you fought an injured uh, uh, Congo dog. And no, you no, had I had to... surgery after that fight. I had three surgeries after that fight. Well, so you tell gonna... me about fighting injured. Well, you gonna well you gonna have some surgeries after I fight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that's all right though. You got, they, got, right. they got hey, they got to put some cement in your in your chin. You you actually think you got hands enough to put to put on me like that? You actually think you do, dude? Dude, like, dude. Yeah, dude, I, I train. I do with people like Tyrone Spong, uh, Overeem. I, I bang with them every damn day, son. You got nothing on what I got. Nothing. Okay. I can't wait. Can't wait to touch you, bro. Man, I don't care who you. I don't care who you spawn with. They can't fight for you, dog. They can't take these fucking hey, bungalows. Hey, I don't on, need anybody thong. to fight for me, son. I, I never uh, have, never will. Ever. All right. All right. Hey, I'm, I probably it's gonna be so nice to punch you right in the soup cooler, son. All right. It's be lovely. Oh, all right. All right. Uh, Hey, right. you know what? I might even I might even kick you because I know you can't check kicks. I might not even kick you. I might just put hands on you the whole time. <laughs> hey, do hey, do whatever you do whatever you think you you got to do to win this fight because I'm hey I'm down on winner takes all. You think about that one. Yeah, <sighs> that's a second offer. God dang it, I won. How, <sighs> how, wait, Matt. He said his contract's bigger than yours. If he's saying winner takes all, you got to do it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> First of all, do I. Not I, the pride here. If I were in a better financial situation, I, I would. If I were in a better financial situation, I would. I would be interested in it. All right. But <laughs> that's sexy, right. don't do. Well, well, <coughs> well, we, well, we, uh, well, very nice. Well, <coughs> we appreciate you calling in, Matt. We appreciate you checking out the show. Hey, don't sound right. like he. Don't sound like he. Um, as confident as I am. Right. Well, oh, I got, no, I got, I got, I got, you got money. You got money in the back. Though. Hey, I got. I got. I got. Hey, I got more to lose. On, on that. <laughs> So you know what I'm saying? Hey, I just hey, I just putting it out there, dog. I don't, I don't blame you for not taking it, 
But you just need to know how confident I am that I'm going to beat the shit out of you. That's good. Like I said, just work on your offensive wrestling, son. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. Bring, bring your good underwear because they going to get shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, thank you very much for tuning in and calling in. And uh, who knows? Hey, how about this? If the fight happens, can I be like, I don't know, the, the guest ring announcer or something? You know, because this is the fight that was made on my show, essentially. So can I get a piece of you the You talk pie? to Dan and he said, right. yeah, you can be whatever the hell you want to be. All right. All right. All right. Well, I think it's... I- that sounds good. All Rampage, right. I can't wait to punch you in the face. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Thanks, Matt. All right, uh, Rampage, we got to let you go. Bye. Bye. Wait, wait. I have to tell you one thing before, before we go. You're upset? No. Okay. You put this tweet this morning, and you just referenced it. Do we have this tweet? Uh, we have the video. What about the tweet? We'll get it right now. Okay, forget the tweet. You mentioned the Gagnum style. Yeah, man. In the tweet. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of the guy, too. PSY? Yeah. Sai? Yeah. Sai, I'm, a, I'm his biggest it, fan. You now. tweeted him something. I, we were supposed to have it, but they, they messed it up. Those guys back there, I don't know what they're doing. You said, he said in the tweet, he's going uh, back home, yeah. and you said, next time, you've been working on the dance. Yeah. I've been working on the dance. Have you really been working on it? I've been trying it, man. I haven't got it yet. Let me just move this out here for a second. Yeah, I'm not going to do it right Come now. On. Isaac, put the music on. No, man. Come on. I'm not doing the it. People, when Overeem was on my show, he, we did the Dougie together. Yeah, did the Dougie. You, man, it was, uh, you can hit it. You can hit it. No, the problem is my, my teammate over here already yeah. videotaped oh. me trying to do the dance, and, uh, and I'm not you looking good. The thunder? I'm not looking good. Oh, yeah. I love this song. Yeah, it's great. Oh, there you oh. go. <laughs> Just give us a little. I can do it. I can yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. But what if he... <laughs> there it is. There it I can't, is. I can't, get, I can't get it yet, man. What about that kid, right? Man, that kid, he's good, man. Look, I can't... <laughs> Just get it. For a second. For a second. Show the people. Come on. We're in New York. Turn it up, man. Turn it up. 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 Come on. Turn it up. Do you hear it? <laughs> yeah. You gotta do the thing with the... This place is gonna collapse. It's like an earthquake. That's good, man. That's good. Here, you gotta do it at the same time as him. Here we go. 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 Hit it. Open Gangnam Style. Oh yes. Yes. Oh wow. This is your best performance since. The Adele fight. I can't do it yet. There, that's the best move. That's my favorite move. <laughs> you do the thing with the legs there. I can't get it, man. That's not bad. It. Rampage, Thanks pleasure, man. Make, Just go on the mic. Fool. Just go on the mic before we say goodbye. Thanks for uh, letting me make a fool on your show. That was fun. I can't that was a fun. That was, that was, that's called leaving I'm, on a high note. Dude, I'm I'm going to I'm going to get it. <laughs> I can't get it yet. Your next fight, you come. Oh, there it is. Come back soon, big guy. Hope I know how to do that dance by the time you get back. I gotta say, you're on your way. I'm on my. I've been. You're kind of breathing hard too. Yeah, I've been. I've been <laughs> practicing. I've been practicing. I've been practicing at the club. No, I've been doing it in privacy. But my uh, my teammate caught me doing it. He he caught me doing it this morning. Oh, he didn't know. And he and he videotaped. And That's he, cold. Did, so you were just doing it in front of the mirror, practicing. I know. I'll be watching the video, and I've been trying to do it. <laughs> do you just sit there watching the video. I watched. I watched the video at least twice a day. In the privacy of your own home? Anywhere. I watch that video on my, on my phone. You know, home, I watch that video twice a day. Do you do it at the club? Haven't done it at the club yet. I was in, I was in a club uh, <laughs> I was in a club in L.A. the uh, other night, and the DJ, you know what I'm saying, said, was I, and I went up to him, I, and I was like, hey, man, uh, how you doing? He's like, you, you got requests? I said, yeah, man, can you play the Opal Gangnam Style? <laughs> He's like, get out of my face. <laughs> oh, really? I would have paid to see that. Man, I, was, I love that song, man. It's a great. It's very catchy. The most liked video in YouTube history. But I'm going to tell you something. I yeah. made this song, I made this song um, like a, right after my fight with um, Ryan Bader. Yeah. And it's a really good song. Right. But it's not as good as that. But he gave me the confidence to go make my own video. Really? Yeah, You're I'm gonna, gonna make a video now. I'm gonna make a video now. Really? Because it's a funny song and stuff too. But he gave me the confidence to do it. So I'm gonna see what, what the budget is and stuff like that. I'm Heavy gonna be in it? No. You, 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 might, you, you, you might make my it. video flop. You think about it. All right. I, you All know right. what? You, I'll put you in the video. One last clip. One last clip. 
You got to promote it. my video, though. Absolutely. All right, I'll Abs- put you in. One last clip. This is a message from your biggest fan. Who is it? And I think it's appropriate to put it right now because we're leaving on a high note. All right. You're refocused. Here he is. You got it? Hey, Quinn, man, I love you. Keep your head up. Wherever you want it, wherever you want to do, man, I'm your number one fan. I'm with you. Can I be in Dispensables, too? I mean, uh, can I be in 18, too? Can I be in 18, too? <laughs> okay, I just want to be the boy that just says something and keep walking. I just want to be in the movie. All right, Quinn, man, I love you, man. Whatever you want to do, I'm your number one fan, baby. Thanks, man. That's Marcus Brimage. Had a huge win this past weekend. Oh, he's a he fighter. Did, he looked like... You like, remember him? We saw him together. We were seeing He was talking about the chubby white girls. That's him. He's, that's it. He's that's the same UFC fighter. Guy. That's the same guy. He's undefeated in the UFC now, 3-0. He continues to defy, to defy the odds. He uh, had a huge win over an undefeated guy in Toronto this weekend. So oh, I, really? I told him you were going to be in studio. He uh, wanted to send you that message. What's his name again? Marcus Brimage. That's the one who liked the fat girls. Exactly. Yeah, he looked different because like he got attacked by a shark that time mm. right there. Though, but big win, though. It's a big win. Yeah. Oh, man, tell him thanks, man. Tell, I will. Hey, tell him it's fans like him and you know, people like that are going to make me, you know what I'm saying, get my love back like I got and, and go and, and go strong. And, you know what I'm saying, I want to be, be the best again. You know what I'm saying? I want to be I want to be the number one fighter again, and that's and that's what that's what's giving me like the drive. People like that. Well, we look forward to it. Thank right. you so much. Thank you. It means a lot to me, Rampage, right. that you would come, and uh, we look forward to that as well. Never. Uh, uh, Revan. Rev- it's Revan backwards. Revan is never backwards. Oh yeah. Yeah. I messed it never up. Never give up. Where can people see uh, more of that? Uh, they can go to Revan100.com. Okay. All right. There yeah. he is. Quentin right. Rampage Jackson. Take care. Check him out Twitter, twitter.com slash Rampage for Real. We will be back in a minute with John Vellante. Until then, check out the. Uh, UFC 152 post-fight press conference highlights, courtesy of MMAfighting.com. We'll be back. You're watching the MMA Hour.